What's going on? Appreciate all the people who can join with me. Just kind of hanging out. Feel pretty decent right now, so we are uh, going to be streaming a little bit. Why not, right? Get the other stream music up real quick. Let's see. I've been liking this one. How's everybody doing? See, I got a few viewers. Well, I made a poll. It seems like everybody wants to see some more Bravo. So this is the list that I've been uh, messing around with. I actually need to change the stream name real quick. Uh, I need to let's see, how do I do that? It's been so long. Hmm. Bear with me. Somebody help chat to the rescue, please. Edit stream info. I found it. Don't worry. Okay. So we're going to call this one 95% win rate. Bravo. Done. Okay. All right. Stream info is updated. So this is, uh, this is why, right? We've got this 95%. 100% going first and going second. We've only gone second eight times, but that's okay. Let me turn this music down just a touch. Right there. Yeah, so this is what we're going to play. I figured we would talk about some bright lights a little bit too. Kind of see some of the new cards for anybody who hasn't seen. So we have... Let's see. What have I not talked about? Tome of Imperial Flame. At first, I was reading this card and I said, okay, you're going to pay one card to draw two cards because you're probably not going to play this if you don't run the, uh, the other hat, right? Then you're going to have to pitch two cards. So you're drawing two, you're pitching those two cards. But with Flame Scale Furnace, you can get a whole lot more, right? What's happening? Appreciate you being here. Um, this card, like I said, didn't seem that good to me, but the fact that you can pair that with, um, it lets you filter while also giving you a whole lot more resources to be able to play something like Tumultai and uh, Empress Dromai. Like, this this seems pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, they, they spoiled this. You get a tunic now? That's pretty cool. These uh, protocol cards are also pretty neat. I like the, uh, the flavor between those. You got the Meganetic, the Pulse Wave, and the Demolition. Uh, these are all cycles that we've seen before maybe not the demolition but either way pretty cool everybody's calling this card bad it just got spoiled just a second ago a zero for four blue is pretty dang nuts i'm not gonna lie right the only downside well there's two downsides as you can see is you have to give them a courage token and a quicken token but here's the deal right you're playing traps you're enabling those traps to be active because a lot of the traps are like if they have additional power or if they have go again something along those lines then you are triggering those traps you're dealing with the damage with the riptide and you're like oh well what if i don't have the trap and i play this card well this is a blue card it's your resource card first cycle you're probably not going to play this right second cycle with all your traps this card is going to be pretty sweet so i'm pretty excited about it and the other card that's kind of new. Well, there's these three here, but this is the one that I was a little excited about. Um, for the people who have stuck around, they know I am an Oldham man. So being able to have defensive ninja, that that definitely piqued my interest immediately. So you play Wax On. Wax On is effectively flicker trick against decks like uh, Lexi and whatnot. Then you get to play this. This is effectively a zero for three block because of the Zen state. Whenever you play this, you get the Zen state. So it uh, basically becomes a three. And then uh, against decks like, you know, opposing ninjas where they're going to be sending a big wide chain or even Viserai if we see a bunch of rune chain generator decks, this Zen state token is going to be huge. So... I expect to see a lot more of the Ninja Turtle. I think it'll be fun. I'll probably try it out myself, to be honest. Um, got a got one more uh, legendary equipment. Got a Battle Warren reaction. Something gets uh, target attack action card defending an assassin attack. It's minus one, cost two. 
Um, not terrible. It's battle worn. That's the biggest thing drawing me to that. Already dead is pretty sweet. I like this one a lot. Ooh, call me big cutie. No, you're the cute one. Appreciate it. Appreciate the follow, zombie. Glad you're here. So contract cards. Whenever you uh, banish a non-action card, when it's non-action cards, just period. Okay. So when this sits here, I banish the top card of the deck and a defending card. So this is huge if they defend with an equipment that has battle worn or temper, right? You can time this well. You should be able to banish something like your grasp of the arc knight, right? If I'm not reading this incorrectly, but banish the top card and a defending card. Yeah, that counts, right? That That's huge. That's, that's pretty sweet. Uh, Bravo blocks with the tech plating. Get rid of it, right? And the art's sweet. Art's super cool. Everybody's freaking out. This is assumably Arachne cutting some dude's head off. Like, that's pretty crazy. Then, uh, of course, we got a three, three cost, six attack brute card. Basically, you pull from the hat whether or not the card is going to be a six, a red, or a three block. You pick two of those, and that's what an, a brute card is, right? So... Here, we got the yellow, we got the six. That's just a funny meme. All right, when it attacks, draw a card. Then discard a card at random. The card is a six or more. Destroy a random item in the arena. So this is going to be a pretty good tech card if we see a lot of these um, mechanologist heroes, right? So cool cards either way. Might as well talk about the last card too, right? This is uh, kind of newer. This is the Bolton Crater Fist, more or less. I expect that they're going to be blocking this a lot. There could be like an option for them to pitch to destroy it next time. And next time you attack this turn, you charge a hero. If it's a yellow card, you get to draw a card. So you're effectively using two cards to charge and get one card back. I don't see that as like a huge benefit. Like I'm sure that there are going to be times where that's good. But most of the time, it's just a two and then a one block guaranteed, which is pretty sweet. So you can swap between this and uh, the uh, Crown of Providence, right? Okay. Well, let's go back to the Nats Bravo list. So for those of you who don't know, this is the list that Diomedes or Ben Hannon IRL played to a top eight calling finish. I've been playing it a little bit. And uh, some of the viewers here have been playing it a little bit too. I noticed uh, there was a couple more, but either way, the fact that the viewers and myself have this at a 95% win rate, that's pretty sweet. So going back to the deck, pretty standard. Um, it's not playing Vindal's Fighting Spirit. That's been kind of a, a Pablo-ism, right? People, ever since Pablo started fatiguing the Lexis, started playing that card. I still see a lot of value in Opposing Visage. It, it fights for this slot. Now, we don't have a Pulverize in this list, which makes this card even better. But I still think having a non-attack 3-block, guaranteed 3-block, is really sweet. What's up, Ravnarok? So, here, uh, AB2. That's another key one. Didn't mention that last time, but luckily, in testing, I was going to be worried that I was uh, not going to have the AB3. AB2 has been fine believe it or not. So uh, still on the three warm mongers going forward, at least for this list, I don't really want to mess around with the numbers just yet. And Ranger is still popular enough that this card is fine. There are times where you just happen to draw it and a bunch of other three blocks. The Lexi has some insane turn. You can keep this one card knowing that they're about to arsenal. And if they don't, if they shoot their last card, it's another three block. You just throw it in front. So, I like the card. It's pretty good against uh, Assassin as well, being a non-attack and Bolton if you're scared of Bolton, right? So, I I'm not going to argue with a blue three block. The other option would be, heck, I don't know, like Crush the Weak. But the on-hit of that card is almost non-existent. As an Ice Man, I've always been happy seeing Bravo flip AB2. I agree. I like AB3. In general it's just with the slots available i guess you could cut like unmovable for the third ab but i really like this card just in general like it's just that extra kind of tech that you need for the mirror and it's not bad against a lot of other decks too like you can just kind of pick and choose where you want it like um 
Azalea, for instance. It's a card that I would play against Azalea. A card I would play against Azuri, potentially. I know it's not in this board plan currently, but, I mean, the card's good. I think you could play it if you wanted to. If you were playing against a very heavy contract Azuri that is primarily trying to, like, outvalue and fatigue you, I think that card's very powerful. So, with all the bull landers right now, though, I think it's fine going AB2. Because you're trying to be aggressive with them anyway. The longer you let the game go on, the more likely I believe that you are going to lose. You just kind of want to throw the pummels and throw the zealous beltings and whatnot. Within reason, right? Like There are going to be turns where you're pitching Starstruck in a blue to attack with Hammer. And just having a couple open. Arsenal. Three sigils is great, of course. But enough about that. If you guys have questions, obviously ask. We're going to play some games. So let's see what we can find. We'll do just regular classic constructed like we've been doing. Public visibility, anybody can join as they want, and uh, anybody can undo as they want, within reason. But this board, it'll be in the YouTube. It's in the previous YouTube videos too. So if you guys want to play with this list and all of these wonderful buttons here on Talishar, you can click the description on any of my videos and you will see the list. Um, I will also go ahead and add it for the people who are here to night bots you can type that in real quick all right so we got a vincent hello vincent let's see so i don't have a button for vincent i kind of just played it by ear last time so we're going to play no room boots you kind of have to and then i think last time i played i definitely played all of these we definitely like all of these cards so we're at 60 cards here. I do like the choke slams. They do have a bunch of pumps in their deck. That's kind of like their game plan, right? And then I think I added this set. This kind of looks right. We'll try it again. It worked pretty well last time. That was probably the best bin set game I had. So let's do it. All right, back to Nightbot. Make sure I got the right deck list. Now, if the music is too loud, please let me know. We don't want to have another mishap like the videos before the last sequence. All right, so deck list, if you guys want to see this, you can go exclamation point deck list, and it should pop up. Okay, let's go to the Talishar screen. We'll full screen that, where 19 is 1, as you can see on the top right. Okay, what did we do? We banished the mobs, guys, and they pitched the blue and made a grasp. Okay, so we have just big damage. Why not, right? We'll just pitch these two. I typically like having this in Arsenal against a Vincent, but I think 13 damage probably outweighs the, um, the benefit of having this in Arsenal. So This could be incorrect. I can see playing Cranial Crush. And then just having this ready to go. Okay, we are leaking. It's cool. I think it's probably... It, it's so hard to know whether or not we want to... What did I just do? They just put a bind counter on it and they're ready to go. Okay. Interesting. Uh, they played Read the Runes. Okay. That's fine. That kind of makes me want to... Man, I don't know. I kind of want to make a surge and attack. I can also see arsenaling this Cranial Crush. It's not bad. I mean, I'm probably going to be blocking whatever they send to me next turn. If it's a destruction then having the arsenal doesn't matter here. I'm just going to go ahead and pitch for a surge, just in case. They're probably not blocking this anyway. Okay, they are blocking. Nice. What's up, Tim Man? Interesting. 
Okay. Okay. Well, surely we will have a good hand here, right? Oh, yeah, I'm glad I made that surge. I get the arsenal, too. It's sick. It's amazing. It's... All right, so no spellbound creepers for them anymore. I'm just going to send this, of course. Set this in arsenal. And then we're probably going to turn into the defense deck, since they have a bunch of these. Well, that Rousey Ancients worked out very well. I'm sure everybody has seen this card at this point. Now it might be hard to read, but this card is basically MTG Time Walk. It's insane. And I love this card when paired with a blue and a choke slam. Oh, card med. Okay. Oh, okay. If you have a blue and a choke slam, no surge. And then this card and some card that you can block with, right? Which is almost all of them. It's nuts. You're just like, all right, yeah, two card eight. Great. I'm Icelander now. Get out of here. Okay, they just took that. <laughs> right? Yeah, they just took that. That's crazy. All right. Big arsenal. All right, well, this hand sucks. I won't be able to play. This hand is big cheeks. Okay, so we are going to pay for this. I'm going to pitch the pummel. Because what I'm going to do is just attack for four. See what they do. Play double sigil arsenal pick. Right. Card mid. Everybody's saying card mid. This isn't cool. That yeah, card just bad, huh? Starstruck bad. There was a little bit when I was like, man, this card could be better than Crippling Crush. It is not better than Crippling Crush. Stop. <laughs> Card mid. You guys are hurting my feelings. Ha ha. 46. Man. What a hand. This hand blocks. Love it when my hands block. Okay, they got a red well and a yellow well. Which well are they going to send? Probably the yellow. Okay, envelop. We got a plus three, so we're getting at least hit for eight. Plus the nine on the rune chance. Uh, I cannot pay for this one. They paid one, so we are definitely taking that. Um, so nine... I'll just start pitching some of these. Then. Uh, there's no reason to do the last one, I don't think. Probably just better to throw these in front. It is what it is. If they pummel me, then they pummel me. Yep, see? And that's just how we play. And got full value out of the hand. We are happy. Now I could do a little switcheroo. Play this paper scene on whatever they do. What was that? What was the quote I made? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not me. It was Andrew Lawrence. Saying, you just give you a deck against Minset. Congrats, you win. That's not how that works. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's rude. Rude of them. So I can take two here. This is kind of awkward, right? I think it might just be better to pay the one and then give them two of these cards. I'll keep the Terrace under in the deck. Just give them those. There's no reason to get that blown up or throw a crown, right? I like the insurance of having the fate. Yeah, yeah, the Nat stream. I thought you meant this stream. It is probably the best stream quote that I've ever seen, too. Oh, Andrew's hilarious. 
and also just a ridiculously good player. He was a Bravo main before I was a Bravo main. He has way cooler cards than me. He's got like a full set of Fable, Command and Conquer. So I'm like, man, I'm so jealous. Speaking of Command and Conquer. Okay, so Mob Skies. This is kind of awkward, right? So I'm going to use the D React. I think it's right. Since this is a six, we can pay here and then we'll give him here and then the d-react from the arsenal we haven't taken any damage this turn as well which is nice we'll keep the sigil on top anytime i see a card like that like a d-react red d-react or a sigil i like to keep it on top because i don't really want to see that second cycle if i can help it so this rebel i probably just taking all of this yeah, we'll just actually i'm gonna throw this since they don't have an arsenal it's not like a huge deal the on hits are already gonna happen so they're getting a rune chant we just don't have enough resources to stop it anyway but we want to keep this it might be worth no it's not worth i think the the three block is worth more than the six attack in this specific circumstance so we'll just swing four then arsenal this unmovable get ready for the uh the next the deathly will i suppose turn seven we're already here what's the null well this hand is uh <laughs> not the greatest but we're going to get rid of this Crippling Crush and probably block with this Ink Blow. Maybe block with the Spinal as well. They just attack me like crazy. This hand's great. It blocks for 11 and then heals 3. Can't complain about that. Widespread. Well, they are going to get the top card of the deck, whatever it is. Probably the second card since we're blocking with the sink below. It's another rebel. Then all they're doing is deathly wailing. I think that's probably fine. Well, they get a banish too. They can break the chain, get a banish. Because they're probably paying. They don't pay. That's honestly kind of surprising. Okay, they didn't pay. Well, we already wouldn't have known that. I think it might be right just giving some armor and using sink below here because i can swing for six if i get a blue just by pitching this they don't have any floating can't give it go again or not go again but i can't pummel it nice we hit the blue Let's see what we banish Scepter. Scepter. Gives them another here. I think it might be right to go ahead and pay for it. Stop a rune champ. It's unfortunate, but it could stumble their turn just a little bit, right? They're taking one from this guy anyway. Back to back.
featured stirrings card. I've seen a lot more of this card. It's uh, it's not bad, not bad. This hand does not turn on Rousey Ancients, unfortunately. But I could arsenal it. Ooh, watch out. Here we go. Block, block. We're going to pitch this. Why not? Block, block. Wing four. Got him. So they already, yeah, okay. I should have paid attention to the rim blood. Man, it's hard playing it on Talishar when you're used to playing in paper. As you can see, all the dice and whatnot. Yeah, they, they were going to have that guaranteed anyway. I could have swung four. I still think, like, keeping your life total high enough, like, it's kind of hard to lose this matchup if you're just swinging hammer every single turn and blocking as efficiently as possible without getting blown out by pummels. So we played around the pummel that one turn, right? So. Ooh. They took damage. Watch out. I can even replace this unmovable with this unmovable. It's great. All right, so rune blood is gone. No way for them to get free rune chance. Banished a widespread. I'm curious if Vincent, like any Vincent deck, actually plays Carrion Husk. Is that a thing? I feel like you want Tunic and everything. And just try to like outpace your opponent by blocks and then having efficient rune chant into uh whatever one of these do, right? I could be wrong, but you do want it in Blitz? I guess that makes sense. Blitz is not nearly as long. Scepter of Pain. This is so painful. Well, I'm just gonna pay. Made a rune blood. Well, we're gonna swing eight at their face. Scepter is so good. I really like this card. The fact that it can target an enemy, like a, or an ally, I should say. Is so cool. Blues and a red. And they all block three. Can't think of a better hand. Alright, this turn is going to be pretty insane for them, I'm sure. It's probably got a pummel in it, so we got to play around that. Probably have a source of go again. They banished an envelop. And not... Hmm. Okay. I mean, this has got to be a pummel, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It could be double pummel. Look at that. Ooh, double pummel. If it's double pummel, we have the perfect answer. That's hilarious. Okay. I'm going to pay. Pay, pay, pay. One, two, watch them pummel. Yeah, it's double pummel. How cool. You don't see that very often. They get a free arsenal of a pummel, which is unfortunate, but... I think it's right to just, like, give them that. Oh, it's no, it's another another rebel. Okay, that's pretty good too. Not anything you can really do with that except for uh, swing the flail. I'll give you that. That's your rune chant. Oh shit! No, misplay. It would die anyway. No, that's okay. We still have three armor. Terra Sunder's great. Spinal's great. Hammer's great. <laughs> Just do whatever. Okay. They're gonna... 
going to swing the death as well. We're just going to play the long game. Already at two. Let's keep swinging. Eventually, this will get their tunic, and then it'll start being two cards. So, there's the tunic. Vanish Oblivion. This card is cool, but it kind of sucks. Just go ahead and take this out of your deck. If you play Vincent, just take it out. Oh. Just passing the turn. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, they just can't beat that, right? Yeah. All right. GG. We're at like a 97 win rate now. It's crazy. All right, let's see if we can ruin it against a uh, against a Rhinar. <laughs> Rhinar's hard. It's always been a pretty tough deck. Now, Ben likes playing Sigil in this matchup. I usually don't. Because it's a zero block. But, in a way, right? You're blocking three. They don't really have a whole bunch of... A uh, whole bunch of on hits. So, the effect of like, always three block is probably just fine. So, let's do it. Yeah, I know. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going first. I can make a surge. Play Showtime. Get. I don't know, Crippling? Probably not bad. Sure. Why not? Put that in hand. I'm going to Arsenal the Vapor soon. We definitely want that. Can't complain about that hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I looked away for one second, and here we are. Well, now I have to block with it. That sucks. I mean... Actually, no, I don't. Okay, so it's... I can give him this and this, and I can guarantee to play this. Maybe even dominate it. Eh, sure. I like Dominated Crippling Crush, right? Probably going to put the uh, Unmovable at the very bottom. Go Buckling Showtime Unmovable. That's a card that I don't usually like to see against them. Ooh. What do they have here? No way. All right. That is unfortunate. I want to play this game out, so I'm going to try to uh, let them if they want to. They might have just left. Play the game with me, opponent. Oh. Okay, fine. All right. Rip. I'm not going to count that as a win. What we want to see over here? The mirror. Yeah. First. And play against Jeb. All right. Mirror's uh, pretty easy boarding. You just play all the cards. And play all the blocking armor, but also big hammer. You want big hammer? That's good. Mr. Dark Side over here giving me a hard time. 97% online. Just, just tell me I'm good. Not really. Okay, so 
here. We just we're pitch attacking, right? That's what we want to do. So I'm gonna pitch here, attack with this. I'm gonna arsenal CNC. Keep that. We'll probably just hold on to it until we see a pummel or we see a good opportunity to actually play it. Got to get their armor out eventually, right? And they are on a good number of cards. They're on 60, uh, 67, right? So they're not too far off from what we are doing. Well, we found it. I'm pretty happy getting rid of two cards if I need to, depending on what they do. I'll likely block with this regardless. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, okay. Oh. So it was getting two armor out of us immediately. Don't really want to get rid of these cards, take a bunch of damage, right? So. This pummel is also not really doing anything for us. I think it's still probably okay to do it. And I'd rather have these cards on the bottom than the crippling. I know we're losing a, a big power card, but we already have a red and a blue. Sacking another blue and then a red is not going to be good. And we get to float a surge too, so it's not bad. No actual value out of the Command and Conquer though. Unfortunate. When it comes to the arsenal. It does hold a pummel very well though. Oh, they're taking 10 here. Taking 10. Unless they have a Steadfast or something, that's a... Uh, that's a big damage swing. It's definitely uh can be game losing. I'm giving this. I'm going to arsenal this paper scene, just play the Turk Slam, take three. They had a spinal here. So they were just going to play the spinal, I suppose. Maybe dominated. And now we can just set up the arsenal, and every single time we see another one, we'll be happy to use the arsenal uh, D React. So. I'm a big fan of the four for eights. In this deck, especially with Starstruck, like I was saying earlier. Being able to just go, okay, here's a two card eight. It almost always leaks two, unless they use one of their D-Reacts as well. So. No way. Okay. <laughs> About to say. All right. Appreciate the follow. Tim Man, is that you, Austin, or is that old Charles Dunn? Death not Charles Dunn. Is that who this is? <laughs> Alright, so they're fully covering it up. Put a card on bottom. They I guess left their hand as is. Sand's pretty good. I will probably not be blocking. I am definitely not gonna be blocking. If they throw a pummel, I'll use paper scene. Ooh, it's pretty good. Pretty good opponent. I'm impressed. Pulverize is a card. All right, let's, let's 
get rid of that comment. I'll get rid of these comments. Get out of here. Okay. Are they taking this? It's probably another D React. No, nope, they're just taking it. Nice. Are they gonna like dominate this full rise or something? I'm pretty crazy. Oh, nice. Cool. So if this pulverize hit, our hammer is going to suck. So it's probably right just to... I guess we give them a block here. Doesn't particularly matter. I want to arsenal this macho, I think. I don't know, giving them full tempo this D React might be important. I think I'm willing to leak one. Then we could just make a surge, maybe. Leak one additional than I would normally. Well, let's do the math, right? So we do this, take one, block here, have an arsenal, but we get to keep a D React, so that's seven. So we're taking taking eight that turn. We do it this way and then block. It's actually might be better just to do it like this. No, we're taking ten here. Yeah, that's fine. We already know that's happening. We're gonna bottom this for second cycle. I've gone back and forth between Sigil and the Mirror. For a long time, I didn't like it. When I first started playing, I loved it. But now it's like... I'm back on it. It's like the bell curve, right? It's like you start over here, right? And you're like, man, I love this card. And then you get up here and you're like, oh yeah, okay, majority of players, ah, it's just mid in the Mirror. You want to block and you want to be efficient and have like, good cards. Then you come back and you're like, all right, yeah, Sigil. Sigil was good. We'll just play Sigil. Yeah, yeah, I was hoping it wasn't that, but... Okay, that sucks. We're just gonna take it, get rid of the spinal, send six back. I was thinking maybe it might be better to block with the spinal there just in case it was a pummel. Well, we would still be leaking one, so it's really not that big of a deal. Leaking six is a lot. block okay hammer for four or hammer for six depends on if they want their arsenal hey okay <laughs> hammer for nothing I won't complain Promote me for half of this price. Yeah, I'm trying to like delete the the comment in general. I usually don't mess with that. Where's my mod? I need a moderator. Delete the comment. Okay. 
dereact into dereact. Okay. It's been a very uh, different Bravo game. They've taken a lot of damage and they pushed a lot of damage too. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Too bad I have to block. I'm gonna block for 10, take one, heal three, arsenal. Same old, same old. We'll keep that on top because it turns on Zealous. Just trying to find a good opportunity to be able to play it. Eventually, they run out of gas, right? Eventually. There has been a game recently where I played against a Bravo and like for 14 turns in a row, it was just Haymaker after Haymaker. You don't win those, just by the way. Do not win those. Bravo is like the most broken trash hero in the entire game. See, look, how crazy, crazy. Cards busted. Okay, revealed to last card could be a pummel. That would be super annoying. Um, if that's the case, I don't want to block this. So it'll force the card out of me. And then I can assess the next turn or the next attack. Yeah, hammer I just don't really care about. It, the last attack too could be some relevant on hit that we we care about blocking. Okay, it's not. All right, never mind. He's just balls to the wall, saying screw you. We're dealing uh, seven plus five. That's 12, 18 damage turns. I respect it. All right, we're going to 14 as well. Nah, you know what? Let's go down. We'll go down lower. Want the arsenal. We haven't seen a CNC from them either though. That's, that's risky. risky. They're gonna block this, right? I have to block a little bit. You know, that ham was nuts. Jeez. Oh, buckle. People are playing that buckle. The combo with buckle is you use buckling blow. You blow up their equipment. Super good. But it doesn't usually happen very often. So, Oh, they played a sigil too. Okay, cool. They also have sigils. So they saw the aggressive side of their deck pretty early. Um, this might go second cycle. But I've already lost so much on a life total perspective that I'm basically not going to be able to dominate anything unless I can pull tempo like pretty quick. So it's not looking super hot for me right now. I mean, Zealous Belting and the Pulverize into Rousey Ancient Zealous Belting and a Hammer. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's just tough. It's just super tough. And then a pretty good pummel off the Zealous, too. And they have more armor. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, this hand is a block with a paper scene. Replace this. Come in for six. And this is turning into a no pummel setup. We're just going to have to start pummeling the hammer. Unless it's just like our best arsenal, right? So they made a surge. I guess they were debating playing the Rousey Ancients. Bottom that. Trying to get to our cycle as quickly as possible. And because we were playing like 70 cards, it's going to take it at least two additional turns. We played a couple of paper scene. We bottomed some stuff. So our turn one was a showtime. Nope, this is the wrong game. No, it's not. But yeah, anyway, so normally 15. It'll probably be close to 17 when we start seeing that. We'll see the Crippling Crush, some blues, then um, a Rousey Ancients over there. So if we can just hold out until then, we'll be okay. No shot. Okay. I guess they're just trying to fix their hand. Okay, this is a pummel the hammer turn, maybe. Probably not now. Uh, this is going to be block everything turn. We'll keep this. We're going to arsenal the pummel. Try to slap it across something. Okay, so we have the same armor situation now. This is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, actually, they have two more health than us, kind of. But at least when it comes to block power immediately. They can stop one crippling crush. And that is it. But same for me, same for me. Okay, we're getting one card. That's good. It's good for us. So that means we're not getting dominated with some crazy thing. I'm going to see a second pummel pretty soon, too. Where'd it go? Okay. Oh, no. Not like this. It might be worth... Appreciate the follow, Aaron. Um, it might be worth getting rid of... Because this is a dominated tear. I think we want to kind of slam this pummel. So I, I kind of want to just get rid of this and block, block, block. And then send the debilitate. And that could be very much worth it. I mean, it's, it's very, very telegraphed that, hey, I have a pummel, deal with it. But it rips out like almost every single one of their cards. So the only other option would be I think that's the best one we have, right? Like, we can arsenal one of these cards, but I don't think it's really worth it. I haven't seen another Command and Conquer. It's likely that that would have been the next card, but Debilitate's just fine. Actually, the on-hit is better here than the Command and Conquer would be. Besides uh, them not being able to do D reacts, but them with no arsenal, this is likely just kind of where we want to be. We got all of our armor. This is very scary. Blue immovable. Okay, not blue immovable. 
This is very key block. This the way they block here, they have like some efficient D react. They don't use the armor here. We're like assuredly dead. But I mean, they know. They know this is a pummel. So. Okay. Sure. So we got some armor. Uh, crush effect is not active. So their hammer is still going to come in for six. Give them two cards. I'll keep the unmovable. I'm going to swing forward back. Because we need this unmovable in Arsenal. Like that is definitely definitely something that we need to hang on to for a little while follow-up turns we'll just try to prioritize getting a surge because we're going to have that crippling crush turn rouse the ancients are uh, pretty dead not really available to be played unless we somehow keep 10 life it's like a maybe okay wow Wow. I just said screw it. Give it to me. That was pretty crazy. So you're hell marrying a starstruck. Okay, well. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play this. Arsenal this. Block with this. Not block with this. Take two. Pitch this. Take two. Play this. Make a surge. Yeah. It's cool with me. It's pretty big. I'm glad you think so, Prince Odd. Even if you don't enjoy it. He's a lot of fun. I like the decision points that he has, you know? Like, it's a lot of back and forth. It's the most, like, street fighter of all the heroes, in my opinion. Because you're just scrapping it out, you know? You're just like, oh, yeah, I'll take some. You'll take some. Over here blocking. Then I'm attacking. Just get there. And then the reward of actually pitch stacking, like I said, we're probably not going to get there this game unfortunately but uh, we will see our pitch deck but we won't be able to just go haymaker into haymaker but i i just think that's super fun that's what drew me to the guardian class in general old it was way easier to do so crown of seeds was busted is busted whenever we get another earth guardian you bet i'm going to be playing that but they're probably going to ban crown of seeds let's be real Probably a good thing. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Rampart's so good. I just want to play my gold Rampart, you know? just want to play it with Ground of Seeds. It's so good. Hmm. Let's give a little refresh. This is a big turn. Big turn. Like, I'm feeling pretty good now. I was a little nervous in the middle. But I'm feeling pretty good, you know, stacking these D-Reacts back to back. Just kind of like played out that way. It wasn't a, a stack on my part, but it works out. They, are, oh my gosh. All right, well, this is best case scenario ever. Get to throw a pummel onto a spinal after you have a surge? Jesus. This is rough for them. They just have to lay down their whole hand. That's all there is to it. And then at that point, next turn might be our pitch stack. And if it's not, it's in the next hand. And we can throw something big enough to where it's going to force them to get multiple cards out. We could take damage and then dominate a crippling crush and end the game. 
Or honestly, it might even be better to play the Rousey Ancients. But next turn is the turn where I think we have to play the Arsenal. No shot. Get out of here. You're not, you're not blocking this? No way. Okay. Yeah, that's still seven. Yeah, with like my telegraph here, you have got to block with at least the iron rod. They have another one, right? No. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, cool. That was fun. Let's play against Missouri. So many people playing right now. It's great. All right, so against Zuri, we're playing all the cards except for Pummels and Immovable. Um, we are going to be playing Hammer and all the other stuff. Let's play a good efficiency grind game. I am not huge on doing anything like super crazy on turn one. Honestly, it might just be Arsenal Zealous. Like, attack with hammer, Arsenal Zealous. They're playing extra cards too. This could go to fatigue. You can fatigue by pressure in this matchup. So. Okay, already getting two cards. When do you bring in Titan's Fist? It's basically only for Lexi. Uh, also, Leviah. Leviah can just, like, throw crazy amounts of damage, as everybody knows. Uh, this hand is a Bravo hand. So, yeah. Um, it might be a blockout turn. Might be something. Okay, well, yep. This is uh, assuredly a blockout turn, probably. <laughs> this is not looking good. I don't want to get rid of all these cards, but like, I mean, we get Shred and then the the Cut to the Chase or whatever it's called. I, I feel like you just have to like play this as if it's a Dory card. They're probably like, oh my God, he's blocking it out. It's crazy because they Shred me here. I'm still blocking for five, which is good. Well, they still have the Shred. Theoretical shred. Hand of life. Yes. Okay, uh, this hand is not terrible. It's probably just a block with a choke slam. It is no longer block with choke slam unless we have to. Probably block with some armor. The attack with nerve scapel, that's kind of annoying. Surgical extraction. Okay, they are attacking the nerve scalpel. There's the shred. So we got to worry about worry about the shred. If they're playing surgical, it kind of ruins our hand. I'm going to end up blocking here and here, I think. If they do end up playing the shred. You block with the tech plating as well. If they hit the crater fist, then you're just kind of fucked. So that you're hitting one of the cards, then I'm able to play the sink below, and then we can come back with a zealous belting into a hammer. Give and go again, sure. Now we're gonna play that. So we played it around it. It's good stuff. Heard Azori compared to Warrior many times. I do think there's like situations in the game where it's very, very much like Dory. We just kind of have to do this overblock thing just in case. But if you play like an isolate or something like that, that's where it gets tricky for me. It's just like, oh man, like do I block this isolate with my greater fist? If I do, I might get it blown up. It's like, eh. Hit him for six. 11 damage turn with uh, three cards. Love to see it. Okay, they're seeing all the D-reacts. We already saw one pitch, though. So we won't have to worry about that until second cycle. I'll prioritize putting this unmovable in Arsenal, I think. It's playing a little bit more defensively. 
If this is for seven, it's not. I'm going to block with one card. Plunder the poor. Um, they're probably not going to, like, flicknize me or anything like that. It's one or less here. They could mask me if they wanted to. I don't think the on hits, like, super, like, super matters here. So we might as well just, like, take the one. Okay, they are not reacting. They got rid of Starstruck. Not the best, but not the worst. At least it's not more silver for them. Zuri is pretty cool. I've thought many times about playing her. Uh, Hurl is just damage, so I don't usually block those. They're never going to like use those to throw a dagger. I'm not going to block this one either. We'll see what they play. I'm kind of saving this for their last card just in case it's something like a Leave No Witnesses or, or an Eradicate or Codex here, right? That's pretty good. What they get? Probably Plunder. Surgical, sure. I think I'm just going to give two cards. They fling the dagger, that's bad. Oops. We'll give them these two, just in case they do try to fling the dagger. That'd be kind of annoying. You can still swing four, game three. Actually, it's swing three, because of the frailty. Unless one more frailty gone. And with these uh, contract Azuri list, it looks like it's more contract focused. They usually play some remembrance as well, so we gotta look out for that. Um, here, I don't really want to block with the blue. I also don't really want to block with the starstruck, so I can save that for a second cycle push. D-React is obviously very good. It might just be take this, use that, replace. I'm going to do that. So you have a couple of options depending on how the hand plays out. I'm going to take this one too. Okay, for seven, draw a card. Okay. Continuing to make this awkward for me. It's pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to use the D React here, pitching this. Make a surge, swing four, Arsenal Fate for scene. Prepare for next turn. They just had a really go wide turn right there. Was it E Strike into. Pearl into E Strike. Okay, sounds pretty good. Very, very go wide right now. Man, that's strong. I feel like we just have to take this stuff. Because surely they're going to be attacking with a little bit more. It's so awkward. I mean, we know it's something, something annoying, right? Yeah. I'll go ahead and use this. Full bottom, we want to see some other cards. 
Okay. And we're playing the efficiency game. Trying to get as many cards out of them as possible. Okay. There's a B React. It's probably just be an Arsenal pass. Yeah, look at that. Crazy. It's like I played this deck. I'll keep the Showtime in hand. I was actually thinking about pitching it, like over pitching with Bravo just to see some other cards. But this card is like almost always a three block. Or it is almost, or definitely a three block against these daggers specifically. Look at all these three blocks, guaranteed, guaranteed three block. Take it. Long hair, don't care. Uh, yeah, we'll give you the card that is actual doo doo. Now the question is, I think, yeah, we kind of have to do, we're forced into playing this in case it's a CNC. Okay. We'll top that. I actually do like the react here. Okay. No, <laughs> no, not my D react. Another one. Okay. So they're milling, milling hard. Mask, no an additional one right yeah it just gets one more one two three four five okay so i mean that's annoying but i mean i guess it could have been worse yeah we're here still ahead on card count So I think that's the last cut to the chase. No, they have one more. Okay, give me a full crush block leaking to. I almost wanna just like block block on here. So they are burning a lot of cards out of me. Making a surge is probably important. I think I'm going to do that. Maybe it, it might be worth just doing it this too. I mean, they're not flinging their other dagger. That's like crazy if they do. And then we'll arsenal this. Also threatens pummel. It's always a pummel threat. That's why I like this card too. One of the many reasons that I like this card. Wait for scene. That is one, two, three. Other sink below. It's probably coming up. Frailty trap. It doesn't have to go again, so that actually doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, his hand is pretty mid, but we take this block with our worm mongers. Probably zero for four. Zero for five. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, they can, they can contract that. That's fine. Don't be something good. Oh, uh, macho, no. That's okay. Discard two cards, please. Got him. These games are pretty fun. I like the games that are a little bit longer.
That's why I played Oldham. I just love playing the game so much that I forced my opponent to play it longer with me. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. The latest iteration of Oldham was probably my favorite, though. The one that played Anathos. It was just, I called him Br Grumpy Bravo because he's an old man. And, uh, yeah. It was fun. It was fun. I liked it a lot. Playing Vambrace and Anathos. It's pretty cool. A lot of people actually disliked it a lot. And, uh, I mean, to each their own, right? But I had a ball playing that. Okay, they're getting Death Touch here. So that means that we are block blocking. Right? Right. Yes. That is the case. Le Ponder. Codex of Frailty is so good. This card should be an assassin only card. Is that a hot tech? Take the ranger off. Who needs the books? Okay, of course it was Death Touch. Card's great. Block, block. Flick your your spiders by do it do it they didn't do it chat swing for five this is my romping club so we haven't seen a remembrance we have not. Hey, D reacts. I love D reacts. Ooh, boy. Um, here it's probably worth giving them armor like this, and here. I think that's right. Because we want to play around CNC. If it's not a CNC, then we can actually use this D-React. That's fine. And we get to play our own CNC next turn. Which is probably a big deal based on the way we block. They don't usually like to react in this situation. So, okay. That's fine with me. They are shredding. So they're getting rid of the showtime. Okay. Okay, it's an annihilate the armed. And a cut to the chase. We get to look at the top. Left the card on top. Um there we're still gonna take the damage, so we'll just leave it as is. It's pretty good. Our CNC doesn't do anything, but at least stops their uh, their last E React that they likely have. They play a couple, right? So they probably have a frailty and a paper scene in their hand. We can kind of deduce that. One of the two. Okay, this hand's good. Yes, sir. We'll take. Okay, there's the last codex. It's good to know about. So that means that they have something. They have to have something in their hand that we want to block if they're pitching the codex. Right. So there it is. I think we have to block with this here. Because we don't want to block with this. We're going to keep these two cards in our hand. What's the last card? What could it be? Uh, CNC is still an option. We only saw one pitched, I want to say. I'll do that. Uh, we'll bottom that. This card that is not great. So there's CNC. Now we can be a little more 
crazy with this sink below because we know it's probably not going to be a CNC. I think we got a little while before we see the other one. Don't know the exact track and where that's at, but it was pitched decently early if I remember. But I don't think it's this hand. Okay. So there's this last bait we're seeing most likely. Maybe a frailty trap on top of that. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. How'd I know? I'm very tempted to do literally nothing against them this turn. Like, don't care. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you can banish the dagger. That's neat. Scholars. Slay the scholars. Um Yeah, I'll I'll use the D-React. That's fine. How many D-Racks do I have? I probably should have checked that before I just started throwing it. We have one. Okay, we, we probably have one coming up, so I feel good about that. Do do do. Seven, go again. Not gonna arsenal either of these. Okay, that's the last sink below. We saw that pitched earlier next to, I think it was an eradicate. They have an eradicate in their hand. But they're assuredly blocking this turn anyway. You have to give me one more card. Cut to the chase. One, two, three. We don't have to worry about that combo with the eradicate anymore. Leave no. They blocked with Annihilate and then leave no. Okay. Going down to two, baby. Down to two. Bravo favored or Azuri favored. It, like almost every other matchup, it is very, very skill dependent. Very. Okay, so this is Annihilate the Armed. We know that. They don't have any more Reacts available. So we just kind of win if we do this. So we'll block with the Starstruck and just play the Macho. But I do think it's Bravo favored. Just being on this side of the table. And playing it many, many times. Um... The daggers are starting to get pretty scary. Like that, they could always have the ability to like flick a knife if we're at one. We don't have any more sigils. We're done with those. But I think they're just dead next turn. I don't want to just assume, but they are probably just dead. If we take three here, we go to three. They don't have any way to deal additional damage. That's fine. Yeah, there's a lot of combat tricks you have to play around with. Um, down to two. Yeah, see? There's that flick knife. This should be the game. It's very close. But yeah, I think it's super close. Like, I've heard people say that it's more like 70-30 in Bravo's favor. I don't think it's that crazy. Especially with a list like this. I think it's probably more along the lines of 60 40 maybe 55 45 like it's it's pretty dang close and um a good azuri against like a, a pretty novice bravo there i think they get there almost every time just because the game goes so long right it gives the bravo more opportunities to uh make a mistake that's the thing with dory too right like you think about dory Go ahead and add a win to the tally mark. So that's the thing with Dory. Against new players, Dory, it's extremely hard 
to uh, play against, right? Like I've seen, well, I know when I first started, I, sorry, give me, give me one second. I, I'm going to play this like it's Azalea. Oh, against any um, Ranger, I'm playing the Buckler. But we definitely want more of these Reacts. I don't think we really want any of these Pummels. They just don't matter. 64 cards is probably fine. We could get the T tier. This is going to be a good test, right? So we'll do that. We'll send them a good luck. Have fun. But I know when I first started against Dory. Yeah, they're playing a shit ton of cards. Oh, this could be bad. Oh, it's not bad. Okay. Good. Good, good. Well, they got rid of two pitfall traps and the endless. They blocked with the endless. So, I, I'll finally finish my story, I promise. So, the against Dory, when I first started playing, I was just, like, shoving my armor. Just all of my armor on, like, turn one just to get, like, tempo back. And I was playing Bravo. So, obviously, the Dory was just like, yeah, whatever. You know, like, you're over-blocking with all of your armor? Sure. Not going to do anything. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a learning curve. There's a lot of that with, like, Azuri where it's like, oh, man, I'm going to, like, shove my armor. And there have been times where... See, I don't want to do this. Oh, sorry, opponent. It's taking too long. But... Yeah, there are times where I'm playing against Missouri, and I'm like, okay, we're blocking for six here. I'm going to make it happen. They have like an isolate. And then they're like, yeah, okay, I'm going to activate. And then I, or let's say I block for two, and then I like immediately play my D-React because I'm afraid of Command and Conquer. And then they throw in like another isolate to some random crap card, and I'm like, no, you got a D-React out of me. So play lines like that from the Azuri side will definitely get you. Just be, be weary. All right, let's try against Fi. Guess we'll go first. Going first isn't terrible. Okay, against here, playing Anathos, no buckler, normal blocking equipment. Um, no favor scenes. You kind of want to play more of the disruptive sides. So, Zealous Belting is not a great block. I've actually heard arguments for actually playing this, um, and they're pretty convincing. Because you are trying to, like, somewhat, it depends on your plan. But you're trying to disrupt here. It might be good when you don't have a disruptive hand to be able to go, here's a three card 11. Because if you get their life total low enough to the point, you can start, like, out fatiguing them potentially. Especially if they're not on, like, consistent Ember Blade with, like, links, Right? Most of the time they're going to be on momentum. So... We will see. Gotta get that flame out. Okay, they are on Ember, Mask of Momentum, all the normal stuff. Okay, so we have Dominate Choke Slam. I'm not gonna complain about that. Don't mind the tectonic plating. And we'll arsenal this Command and Conquer. Maybe we get a Pummel, and maybe we just kind of get there, you know? It'd be pretty good. Fi has always been a pretty hard matchup for me as a player because I like to play so defensively. So I've had to really, really learn on how to like maximize my hands. And I think this is probably right. Just sending something, choke slam, it stops the Phoenix Flame buff, stops the Tiger Stripe buff. It could just be like a plus two heal. I mean, can't argue with that. It's like this, uh, what is the other one? Debilitate. It's like debilitate numbers. Give them a minus two. Yeah, that card's sick. Their hand must be insane. Or they have a D rack. One of the two. But then not the block on turn one. It's pretty nuts. They're in the tank, baby. 
In the tank. Maybe it's me. Yeah, in this matchup, I just kind of evaluate my hands. If I get a full blue hand, I'm probably not going to be doing anything. So I just kind of lay the hand down as I see fit, stopping the mass triggers and whatnot, using the armor on the key turn to stop the on hits for when I uh, can do a, a proper, proper disruption pivot and then hope to, to keep the tempo. Sometimes it doesn't happen, obviously. For anybody who's played this matchup, they know. One of these days. Are you there? Go out of full screen real quick. All right. Well, let's look at the results. What we've been doing. Oh, that counted as a loss? No. Whatever. I was hoping that wouldn't count as anything. But that that is not accurate. Don't go anywhere. Oh, we got some other people playing too. Look at that. Oh, no, no, no. That, that was somebody else. I see. Because I don't think I've played Reinar that many times. It's only been like once. Yeah, that makes more sense. Cool. Well, I'm going to home screen this since they are non-existent. Yeah, this board plan has been very good. I like it a lot. And I really don't want to cut this unmovable for AB3. It was so good in that mirror. Hey. All right, playing gets underscore. Let's see. Okay. Against Icelander, bet you guys can guess it. It's pretty easy. Take out vapor scenes, sink blows, unmovable, choke slam. This one could be um, Starstruck, but I like the yellow, being able to overpitch, especially because we're on Tunic in this matchup, playing Crater Fist, because we don't really have another option, but it's pretty good against Bull Lander. It's just like three life, right? Sometimes, like somehow, if they don't have an arsenal, you can like crack Crater Fist, play something. It's like not terrible. And well, there's a bunch of Starstrucks. Um, I guess we can arsenal it. I don't hate it. That's a cool little, little background there. It's really not like a good way to do this on turn one. We don't really have anything that we can do. Like we can overpitch this maybe. Just do this, Arsenal, and keep the blue. I mean, they're going to block, right? So, yeah, I'm just going just gonna to pass. I don't like Arsenaling these really big attacks unless it's Crippling Crush, but, like, it's kind of the best we got. And then they, they could Coronet Peak here. That would be super annoying. Uh, this is surely going to get fused. They got Polar Blast. We will do the thing. 
yeah, we're, we're kind of getting screwed here. Um, that's why I don't like arsenaling that card. If I can help it. Waning Moon. Okay, they're not Coronet Peaking. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Had me sweating. Because I really needed to be able to play this card. Okay. Cool. It's not even Frostbite. So this might give us a little bit of breathing room to be able to play this. So it's a yellow ice vein, very well could be arcane ice lander. Oh, this hand's great. It is not arcane ice lander. Is it worth dominate here and taking five? They pitch channel. The only way that that screws us is if they have a, the third channel. I'm going to do it. 33 all. No way. I'm in. We're in there. That means they have another D react in Arsenal. Probably. Alright, come on. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, they're playing this exactly right. Now, they're probably going to throw another one of the uh, seven attacks, or even the eight. Okay. Is there any world that I want to play this Rousey Ancients? Maybe. Take three. Because mm -hmm. I can see a coronet peak activation here. If they throw their hand, I'll probably give command and conquer and then attack with the star shark. Dominated. Really depends. If it's another attack like that. If they coronet, I have the tunic. I can still rouse the ancients. Yeah. I like that. The reason I'm just throwing that crater fist, they don't really have like on hits in their decks. None of them are really playing CNC, so. Sure. So now we definitely are doing these two. Pitch this, boom, boom. We have the option to go six. We also have the option just to play the Command and Conquer. I would like to play the Command and Conquer if I have the option. But if they give me a Frostbite, take whatever damage and then we'll attack for six. Okay, they don't care. Yep, well, like I said, I would just do that. Star Trek stuck. Been playing four card hands the whole time. Hands pretty good. Oh, they're <laughs> just attack every turn, I guess. Um, This is tough. It's tough every single time until they get rid of their coronet peak. Because 
Uh, I think it's probably just right to no block here so I can play this zealous. It might be right just to play this. I go again, again. Maybe, maybe we just block here. Appreciate the sub. Good to see you. I feel like they're gonna peek here. Well, they they have the option to peek. So I think this is still playable. They deny their arsenal if they peek. Okay. Yeah, I think that it's definitely right. Subscribed for six months. Man, it's been that long. That's awesome. I appreciate you. Appreciate the support. Um, yeah, so we're we're pretty cool with that. We're not gonna pay, obviously. Just want to pay for that frostbite. Swing back. Gaining some life back, unfortunately. Seen all their scars. All their bulls. We're not gonna pay. We want you to take damage, opponent. Not the other way around. Islander's gonna be gone before we know it. Sadly, think I missed a few. Yeah, it's all right. There was a month where I like wasn't able to stream at all. That's okay. I mean, the sand's not bad either. Just keep playing it. I have literally just IP. However many turns this is, one less card every single. That's that's so frustrating. It was a decision I made. That's for sure. But we are hitting the gas, so I mean I'm not like too upset about it. We gotta get that sucker out. Get it out. I don't want it. I feel like this matchup is pretty bad. Against some Icelanders, I'm not like too scared. But it can be extremely unfavored in certain scenarios. Yeah, just keep it going. Woo, big damage. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Double blocks. Man, it's just so frustrating to do all this. I just can't play this card. It's so bad. Maybe I'll just give the one. Take four. We're getting in the danger territory. I'm going to do this. I need to get it out. If they respond, then we have the ability to um, at least AV1, maybe. Sick. I don't like burning the tunic like that, but I would much rather have this in Arsenal and save it for something else. Like a Command and Conquer. Appreciate the follow, Mellow Man. Or Mel Man? Many ways to say that. Sorry if I got it wrong. Alright, so we crush here. Um, it's not going to matter. We already got rid of all the cards that the crush effect actually matters on. Um... How many reacts have they played? One, two, 
Could play another react here. Block, block for one, take five, go to eight. That's rough. It's real bad. But we get the... Yeah. Hmm. Starstruck being an arsenal really screwed us. Maybe we just get these. I think the game is gonna isn't gonna be going on for much longer. Nine is a little bit better than eight. We haven't seen but one sigil as well. It's only turn eight. I've seen half a deck. So, we'll see him soon. This very well could be a react. That's why I kind of like prioritize this. I mean, they, they're playing Faper Scenes. They're probably playing Sync Blows as well. They've been trying to play this like back and forth game with me a lot. So. I feel like this is worth. It's always worth like throwing a pummel too, right? Like it's definitely discards and whatnot. So it also depends on what their block value of their hand is. Because they have to get three cards that they don't want to just get rid of the arsenal. Plus, like, headpiece or something. What are they doing? I am not going to pay if they storm striders here and give me another frostbite that blow me out. Yeah, we're just going to do it. Now, they're probably still going to waning moon. I feel very behind here. They're going to one. So we... We're going to have to double block whatever they do to us. They get a free arsenal. Yeah. Okay, we have to draw a Citadel next turn. Or I'm pretty sure we're just dead. Oh, we're just dead now. Never mind. <laughs> Good game. Good game. I think that was a good example of uh, why you don't arsenal your big attacks unless it's something actually disruptive. So, it's another boss for the books. Then, we'll at least finish off with Lexi. This might be the last match. We will see. Alright, so Lexi is uh, no zealous, no pummel, no immovable. They do play Frostbites. You get caught with this. It's pretty bad. The blue ones are fine because they're resources. And then uh, it being a block five from hand is still pretty good. They do like to go uh, five into five a lot. So we'll play like this. We're playing the buckler and then everything else is pretty standard. So I didn't choose. So they decided to go first here. I usually go first, or not first, second with Lexi every single time. Every time. No matter what. This is not a good Bravo hand. I would much rather it uh, be something that I can dominate, obviously, but... 
it's whatever. We're playing Icequake. So they're also playing 63 cards. Withering Shot, the mode is plus one attack. They're actually attacking. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I might block with Starstruck and Sink Below. I think that might be better. Because I can potentially get a hand that plays Crippling Crush. I do not get the Surge. That does kind of suck. But I think this is the higher payoff. Crippling Crush for moving cards from the opponent's hand. It's usually a little bit better. Come on. At least one blue. Hey. You've been dominated. Don't mind if I do. Also, if I'm playing as Lexi going first, I usually don't attack. For that reason, there. Because it gave me the ability to filter and play Dominated Crippling Crush. This is guaranteed to hit. One, two, three, four block here, and then a three block from hand. Still crushes, right? So if they don't have three of a kind, that they do lose a pretty significant amount of tempo. And a lot of times they will just take this 11 here, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I got a blue, depending on how many blues they have, that might be their only blue in hand. Withering shot, actual on hit is not very good, not a big deal. Icequake reveal. They are loading. Uh, drill shot is a little annoying. I think it's worth. Man, you think about this. Like, swinging hammer isn't that big of a deal. We can make a surge. I think that's a little bit better. Arsenal, the fate for scene, just call it. So they're going to be playing this Ice Quake next turn anyway. They're going to have final. So we'll do that. I blocked with the wrong card. I meant to keep the Macho, but it's okay. So um, obviously can't do anything else. We're going to Arsenal. Let's see what they got. Double Warmongers. A. Eh? Spinal's good too. But Spinal, like the Perch Grapplers and the Hornet's Sting, that's what this is. Yeah, the Spinal. <laughs> Where to go? Okay. See what they do. I'm using tunic. It's a good start. Full tear. Maybe it's an all red hen. It's looking like it. Uh, this on hen isn't super critical to me. I'd rather block the next thing. So they don't have an all red hand, funny enough. Okay. I don't know, maybe their last card, they want a plus one and then have a double arsenal set up for next turn. I do generally think that's better. Oh, <laughs> down and dirty, baby. Time to get down. Cool. <laughs> so that was their only arrow. I see. Okay, this costs five. Because of the hamstring, so it cancels out the surge. We'll just recycle another one. This will get a couple of cards out of their hand, most likely. Or one card in Perch and Hornets. If they give us these two, it's like off to the races. 
Time to go. Get him. We have all this armor too. Oh baby. I like playing matchups where I know <laughs> what each deck wants to do. Like significantly. I play both of these decks at, at this point pretty extensively. Obviously more with Bravo, but Lexi, I'm starting to get to some reps with her too. She's very strong. So we got a Falcon Wing and a Command and Conquer. A lot of people like playing the Command and Conquer. I'm not huge on that card in Lexi. It's fine. It's three block. It's like not terrible as a popper. Okay, so we're getting three of a kind here. Uh, it's probably going to be an Ice Quake turn. Since that is the case, might end up being a Arsenal Choke Slam. Block with all these cards. Or block with the whole hand, period. Just keep the fate for scene. Nice Quake. Codex. All right, we're not playing the paper scene. No, sir. Yeah, that was their only arrow. Hmm. So this was that uh, down and dirty turn that they played. I don't play this card into Bravo. I do play this card. I think it's probably the best available popper if you're worried about Jeremiah, which you should be. All right, so first load, go again. Coming in for eight. Big eight. I'm just gonna max block. Give Buckler these two. Um, They probably load here. They're playing Art of War, that's good to know. So they probably load here, maybe get a Falcon Wing. Should play the Codex here after they load. Um, okay, I guess they're getting Drill Shot. Yeah. Um, they can't do anything else here. I could just Vapor Scene keep the armor. That gives them the opportunity to play another Codex. I'm going to play the Vapor Scene. I'm, I'm saying for like next turn, Codex next turn, but that's okay. The armor is a little more valuable here. Yeah, we're going to keep that card. Heck yeah. Free Arsenal. No, they do not want an Arsenal. They do want an Arsenal. Oh no. Alright, Choke Slam, good. Turns off their Bolton shots. So they have none in their uh in their discard. But just an annoying on hit. Just curious why they're playing 63 cards and a couple of them are down and dirty. Okay. So we get the perch. That's pretty big. Oh no. Not like this. Oh no. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah. Well, uh. Goodbye, Spinal. And we'll see you next time. Let's stop these on hits. Sigil is good. It's just, uh, we're praying that all they have are like Bolton shots and Falcon wings. That's all we want.
Maybe we can keep this final. That'd be pretty cool. But I'm uh, not getting my hopes up. Anytime we spinal, like dominate spinal now, it's for sure going to hit. They're not giving this New Horizons, and they're not playing D-Reacts, let's be real. At least 0 for 4 D-Reacts. I had to really think about that. So, okay, that's that's a very, very relevant on hit. So, uh, this is an off turn. Unfortunate. Another one. Is that their second three? Yeah, it is. The loss didn't register. Come on now. Show the people I lost. Endless, uh, that is also irrelevant on hit. Don't like that one either. I think I would rather take the damage from this. Endless is like kind of a big deal overall. Could give all of these and then block. Give these two for the infecting shot. We're running out of armor. Is it worth it? I don't think so. I don't think so. One for five. Mm. It's actually a really tough call. I'll go to 27 if that's the case. Yeah, sure. I'm going to take it. We'll see if those extra points matter. We're going to arsenal one of these. Okay. Uh, another block hand. We just plays them as we seize them. Block, block, pass. I find these games actually take the longest out of almost all of them. I think the Bravo Mirrors are way shorter than the Bravo B Mech Lexi. Because the Lexi has to sit around and like think about all the things that they have to do. And they do have the potential to get fatigued like unintentionally. Like I, I want to hit them. But if they keep hitting me, I'm not going to hit them. You know what I'm saying? So... Ooh, that's rough. We love it when they have all red hands. Plus one. Ah. Um. Already played three oak. I'm just gonna. Mm, I'll give him one card. There you go. Just for you. Uh, yep, I'm going to take this one as well. And then I'll probably just block, maybe double block on that. If it's a plus one, it's a searing shot. Okay, so I'm going to use the immovable. Then we'll just swing four. don't really prioritize swinging the four as much here, but I think it was still right to do so because it gives us the option to either block with the two three blocks or just do exactly what we did with the immovable. So I got plenty of armor. 
sigil. Just waiting for a uh, another relevant red, of some sort, or starstruck. Heck, that'd be pretty good. We'll have to end up arsenaling it though, if we draw it like soon. Lexi is playing pretty well. The last Lexi that I played and uploaded, uh, they didn't see any three oaks until the end of the game. So this is honestly a little bit better showcase in my opinion. So, I mean, we are definitely not just home free just yet, but I mean, I'm feeling pretty good about the life totals. Okay, there's a ice quake. This. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play this, I think. That's right. Could get blown out by Codex here, actually. Not super happy about that. That was probably a misplay. Rain Razors. Falcon Wing. Eh. Seven. It's like whatever. I'll give him one card. Take four. Last card is the one that's going to matter. Another rain. Yeah. I hate it when that happens. Okay. Plus one. This is going to be give you, uh, give you six arsenal pass. Okay, not punished for the sigil. Ah, nice. Special. Well, not that nice. Because I can't get a free surge off of the star shot. Might try to arsenal the uh the star shot here. Start going for something a little bit better. Searing shot with go again. I think we just play the sink below from hand. I'll get rid of choke. Could turn into a two block, but. And it did. <laughs> well, I gotta say anything. Why do I do that? Hammy. Uh, this has go again. This is assuredly. A codex. What arrow do they get here? They get a command and conquer. That's pretty bad. So I'm not I'm not really doing anything next turn. I'm gonna give them one card. I'll just block whatever they get. Most of them are one for fives that they end up trying to um, trying to grab the command to conquer. Well, they can't play the command to conquer. I think we just block with this attack. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll bottom that. I'm going to swing here, even though it's only three. Actually, I can't swing. Never mind. I'm going to make a surge. And we're going to arsenal this. Oh, don't look. Ah, they know. Shh. Well, at least we're not going to get rain. Starting, probably. Oh, man. 
This hand can go many different ways. Not endless arrow. We hate that card. So we can block for nine plus armor of some sort of combination. Play Warmongers. Pass the turn. Depends on how crazy they go on this turn, right? Or we could just take most of the damage that they throw, of it, throw at us. Slam Starstruck. Call it a day. I'm more inclined to do the Starstruck line. Just because of this card. It is just kind of damage. Uh, that is definitely damage. You can have it. I'll take five to gladly send a Starstruck. So. And then, unfortunately, I think we have to give this. But I really want to dominate this. Because this is definitely going to get a time walk out of them. And then we get the Arsenal, the Crippling. Like, oh, man. That's hard to beat, right? The Quiver. Goes to bottom. Nice! Get that Codex out of here. We hate that card. We didn't get hit with like a hamstring or anything, so we're good. We used a good amount of reacts already. One, two, three, four. So it's unlikely that we get like super bricked the follow up turn. And it's still possible, but it's unlikely. So this is uh, just going to give us the turn. They could send a five, actually, if they decide to use Tunic and Hornet Sting. But it's not that big of a deal. Depending on the ham, we can just give two cards and then send Crippling back. And that'll be uh, very bad for them. So they're taking six here. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. No, not nice. Um. Well, yeah, we're uh, we're gonna pay. If they play another one, that would suck. That would suck. Um. I think we just have to pitch a blue, just in case that's the case. Yeah, that'd be really bad. I mean, that's probably what it is. Yeah. I'm going to arsenal the other winner's bite. For sure. For sure. We'll arsenal the choke slam. Just keep the ball rolling. I don't think there's any argument for playing the Turk Slam dominated over the Crippling right now. This gets way more cards out. We now remember we don't play Pummel, so we just have to do the best math that we can. Less armor means uh, more likely that this is going to happen. So worry about it next turn. It's pretty pretty bad for them. They could have another three yoke. Tunic three yoke would be uh be pretty bad for us. We do have another one of those, of course. But at least we don't have to worry about the codex. We can start like throwing things out of the arsenal. They're just giving me the whole hand. Sure.
Nice. Sounds great. If this is a winner's bite, they flip and play it. It means that we can't tear us under this choke slam. Just depends. I don't know what I would do if I was in their situation. I think I would wait. I think I would flip, but wait. Maybe. Yeah, it's tough. It's actually a tough call. So I want to get like more cards out of the opponent's hand as the Lexi on the turn where I have like a three euro turn. Because so obviously you're not doing anything here. Just attack. I mean, that's an option. I didn't immediately think about that one. Um, I do think it's right to block this. Then we can still play the Titan's Fist and get multiple cards out of their hand. Like uh, the Terra Center Titan's Fist. Yep. Go get them, baby hammer. Take their cards. It's likely that they do just take this, especially if they have the three oak. Just kind of go. Say it's go mode. Let's go. Um, I might use Crown of Providence to get rid of my arsenal to block more, depending on the situation, or filter the hand, just because we know. Codex is not coming up the follow-up term. They're not on Codex of Inertia either. We've seen plenty of cards. I still think it's Winter's Bite. I do. Really do. This is going to be a long video. So, I'm trying to think what I'm going to do for the Icelander match. I'm going to upload the loss for sure. I think I'm going to use it as a learning experience for people to maybe not prioritize arsenaling those big things. I think that single handedly lost me the game. I was able to block more Arsenal Zealous Belting the follow-up turn. I think I would have got that. Or at least had a better chance. Right. I don't want to just, like, claim the victory here. Okay. Yeah, they're just taking it. Okay, that was the last rain that we saw. It was a Bolton Shot and Rain. So the other ones are still stacked next to each other. This hand is garbage. Garbage. Well, there it is. What the heck? I miscounted. Did they shuffle? Or am I just... No, they're playing a bunch of three of a kind. They see their stack way faster. Um, This is just damage. What do they grab here? I think it's probably right to block here, here. On the second card, we might just uh, block with this to prevent some of the damage. This is hard. at the end have strato skill discard to pummel you dress ice bane arsenal ice bolt with boots yeah i just would have had more health is what i was kind of looking for 
Oh, you were the you were the Icelander. Yeah, that was a very good game. You played very well. Uh, let's see. We're thinking. Let's see. Is there any world? No, I don't want to discard. Right? This doesn't work. I think I have to burn this. Try to turn that with the hat. Yeah, we get we gotta look and try to get it to be a blue. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. I think the matchup's like pretty pretty unfavored for me anyway. Or for Bravo in general. I wouldn't say pretty. I think it's the game can go a little bit longer. But it's probably like 60-40. Wow. Well, they just fucked me, didn't they? <laughs> Not like this. Jesus. I mean, do I just hammer? What do I do? What do I do? I mean, this gets cards out, but this like definitely makes me discard, which is bad. I guess I'm just gonna hammer. Like, I don't know. Make a surge hammer. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, you still played well. Like, I'm not going to let you tell me that you didn't play well. The big mistake for me is I basically just, like, IP myself, right? The intellectual penalty by putting that star shuck in the arsenal. I think it's just so hard to play. They got me good. Just passing. I was like, oh man, this codex. Alright. It's been a pretty good Lexi game, but good lord. Our opponent takes a long time. Could be me. Nope, it's not me. Yeah, that's fair. It is 7 o'clock. I, I think they refreshed the service at 7. do it again it's really not uh not lagging for me very much so i don't really know what the deal is yeah no that's fair I really want to finish this game, please. What do we think about Icelander? We think she's going to be gone pretty soon. She's at like 900 LL points. She's close. She is close. She's good. I tried playing her for a little bit, but she's a... Uh, Takes a lot bigger brain than mine to play her well. So. I just like Ice Heroes, I think. Make those ninjas suffer. And watch, I'm going to be playing Ninja <laughs> before it's over with.
I know. I want it. I want it. Try Bravo and felt that. I don't have a brain for the mirrors. I mean, that's fair. The mirror is like kind of tough, but I mean, it's just like this matchup in a way, right? Like if they have a very explosive turn, you block as much as you can, swing hammer maybe, or um, if they're just swinging Anathos, you, you like just block with two cards, set up your pitch stack, call it good. And the pitch stack is super easy. Like it's really not that bad. You just go pitch a red, blue, 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 pitch a red, blue, 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 pitch a red, blue, blue, blue. You just do that constantly. And it just kind of naturally happens because your power cards are uh, like Rousey Ancients. And that's a blue. You just stack it next to your big attacks and you, you're good to go. But, I mean, I make it sound a little bit easier than it is. Because you do have to kind of keep track with that while also seeing what your opponent's doing and whatnot. It takes a little bit of time and practice. Another thing is like... If I have V reacts in my hand, unless they're the blue immovables, I'm not pitching those ever. If I can help it, there are times where it's just necessary to do so. But yeah, never played Oldham. Pretty much so. Guardian generally felt alien. I mean, that's fair. Oldham took a little bit of time for me to kind of get used to with the crown of seeds and whatnot. But once I figured out, like you're just kind of putting down pummels and like. Well, honestly, you can put any card down for the most part. But you just kind of like set a pummel down. You block a little bit. You finally see like a CNC. You use Crown of Seeds, Rampart that turn, Arsenal the CNC. Then you use Crown of Seeds, Rampart the next turn. Now they're next to each other. So your second cycle is Command and Conquer Pummel. Like that, that's really all you do. It's not that bad. 162cc Pro Quest on Fab TCG now. I'm not sure Icelander would take down enough. She's at 834, so we need to win 83 of them. Okay. I thought she was higher. I thought she was like 900. No, no, no. That's Lexi. That's Lexi. My bad. Um, I'm going to give them just a little bit. I'm going to keep reading some of the comments, but I might have to claim this victory. And we'll try to get one more game in since we didn't get like a full full finish but i still think it, this is a pretty decent showcase of the deck so see 37 for lexi since she's a 926 very reasonable yeah yeah i mean lexi's probably gone let's be real lexi is super good super good man they had me play this basically one hour game. Come, come on, just finish, please, please. I mean, they're probably just not here. Let's be real. I'm curious how this would go after drawing this like crap hand, you know? Dinner was ready. Come on, kids, get your dinner. Don't tell the Bravo player that you gotta leave. Whatever. That's it. Let's go. Uno Moss. Nobody wants to see Bolton, right? All right, fine. We won Bolton. Sticky Nicky. We'll make it happen for you. Um, I don't have a Bolton button. Not like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess, like, this, these cards are good. Maybe. Don't really need pummels. Maybe you do need pummel. If they're on combo, you kind of want the pummel for the command and conquer. You can just set it up and wait. Um, maybe you just don't need this. Just play the pummels. Or you can play the extra cards. They usually slim down if they're on Raiden. If anybody has insight, let me know. I mean, you don't change any of these cards. That's for sure. It's like these cards are good. It like just stops the Bolton Banish to give go again. Like that's that's really good. We don't want these. We don't want this. Uh, I don't think we want Sigil. It's like between Sigil and Pummel pretty much. The way that Ben has been boarding. So like I think we play this. 
Maybe we just play these cards. Nah. We want to see the bummel. Then, uh, tech planning, of course. I'll call it. Well, we found it. That's what we wanted. They're on Raiden, Iron Song versus Snapdragons. Pretty, pretty standard, right? Maybe, maybe we just make a surge. We could swing. We can swing. Yeah, let's. No, I don't want to swing. Oops. Wrong card. There we go. I don't want them to see their Luminas like earlier than they have to. That's why I didn't swing. Sand's pretty cool though. We could go tear asunder, maybe. Play the D React, tear asunder. Illuminate. Sure. Just for you, friendo. I love this card. It's like a draft all-star for me. Zero for four, put it in my soul. I like Force Prism in draft. So. Um I'm hoping that this just gets some of the armor. So when they defend, they get to charge the soul first time. You'll be dealt damage each turn. Prevent one of the damage. Pretty cool card. And then Iron Sun versus you get a courage token. Next sword attack this turn gets when it hits. Okay. So they, of course, also play D Reacts. So, fortunately, we didn't get any of the armor, but we do have Command and Conquer Pummel. We love that combo. It's hard to beat. This card's also very good against them, too. I wish this was an on hit and not a crush. They make their Raiden literally dead. Man. Oh well. well. Whenever we get the the mangle guy, we'll have plenty of on hits, maybe. Uh, <laughs> um whatever. Yeah. That <laughs> Okay. Oh Bolton. We love Bolton. Maybe crown here? Oh. Get that crown of providence? It's buckle worth running. Or is it just not good enough compared to other options? So, right now the buckle slot is kind of taken up by a warmonger. Supremacy. I think that card is probably just like a necessary evil at this point. While Lexi is still a thing. Or just ranger in general. Like the card is very good against that and good against runeblade. Buckle is fine. If you want to play a more aggressive game plan into those decks, you just have to kind of um, cut down on your defense reactions. So it's all about a playstyle preference. Easy pumble. So it's one prevention. That's pretty cool. I like that it does that five. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, so with Warmongers, I'm saying I think it's a necessary evil with the cards that are, or the decks that are at the top right now being Ranger, and uh, it's also pretty good against our bad matchup, which is Runeblade, right? Go ahead and play this turn out real quick. I'm just going to play this. But um, if you wanted to play a more proactive game plan, with like buckling blow reds and buckles for the uh the ranger matchup then you can do that but you would have to cut down on some of your defense reactions like fate for scene so if you like playing fate for scene like me where i like to play a pretty defensive like lean towards second cycle just be the most efficient then i probably wouldn't play buckle at more than a one of it's still a pretty good tech choice right like it could be your 40th blue if you find that you like having a little bit extra resources. But, I mean, the card's fine. Like, 
Terra Sunder is a staple, and it's just Terra Sunder, but mainly just damage. And if you time it right, like second cycle or something along those lines, it's pretty crazy. Like in the mirror, you can kill a tech plating. Like seven dominate is no joke, right? So, um, this they charged. I'm just gonna give them some armor. We don't want them to draw. We're just giving them the business this game. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see, it's been Terra Sunder and a Command and Conquer Pummel and a Crippling Crush and the Starstruck. And next turn, it's going to be Choke Slam. Pretty sweet. So, it's going to be more useful to Buckling Blow, Buckle against Ghostly Touch and Storm Shatters. It is good against that. It is. Uh, it's not a bad tech card. It's just when you run that card, you're either cutting on your sideboard equipment or your D reacts usually. Right. So another thing you can do is if you wanted to cut one pummel, a lot of people are only on two, allowing them to be at 40 blues, and that can be your 40th blue. And it will just blow up a ghostly touch or a storm striders. But a lot of times what I find in those matchups is against like Icelander, for instance, if I'm pitching a blue to play a blue, that's not super common, right? And that gives them more opportunity to respond, give me frostbites and whatnot. And that means I'm taking more damage to keep more cards in my hand to be able to make that play. Uh, it's better against Kano, of course, if you see it early, but as a one-off, it's kind of hard to do. Let's see, this yellow card, this gets plus one, so that's guaranteed going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to get the go again. Is there any on hit from this? Um, no. I'm going to take this. Then against Dromai, one thing to keep in mind, at least for me, I don't fatigue that matchup. A lot of people try to do that. I try to kill them before they have the opportunity to set up a big ghostly touch play. So I'm very aggressive. I'll throw my zealous beltings in the hammer at their face a lot unless i have to kill something like a mirror guy or a passing let me read your comment it's hoping you'd be more oh okay same comment but hopefully that helps with the, the thought process at least um how many d reacts have we seen we've only seen the one i'm gonna play the command and conquer again yeah of course Bravo is very rewarding. If you get pretty good with them, it's uh, it's very hard to, not very hard. It's very, very easy to get a bunch of wins. It's just, you, if you make a mistake, he, he's a very, um, you have to be a very disciplined player. If you make a mistake, then it could just snowball out of control. Because you do end up getting a bunch of like random hands that are one blue and three reds and you're not playing any of your reds off of one blue almost ever unless it's command and conquer it's super fun i love anathos it's my favorite weapon raiden duskbane sort of so cool I wish he was better. Like, my favorite characters to play in RPGs are paladins. I like those. Like, uh, I'll play a lot of Dark Souls, the Dark Souls series. And, like, my favorite build ever is in Demon Souls. And it's just this life gain paladin with a holy hammer just swinging it around. You got the, the moonlight blade for the people who like to tank behind, uh, behind shields yeah it's fun stuff wish he was a little bit better maybe one day okay we're playing illumina i just played it from arsenal <laughs> you're not getting my illumina no sir that's funny i'm getting rid of my illumina sounds pretty good this hand um 
depending on what they do. This is nothing I care about. Okay. Give it a go again. And attack me for three. That's fine. It's going to be Rouse the Ancients into Chokeslam. Yeah, I. <laughs> this has just been a very good sequence. When Bravo does this, it almost feels unlosable. Or if you're on the other side of the table, unwinnable. I like it. It's fun. It's like I'm playing Lexi. Just throwing crap every turn. With on hits. I'm sorry, Sticky Nicky. I'm sorry. Bing bang bong. This card is nuts against their deck too. This is against their attacks. It doesn't really affect the Raiden. But. The last card. Nothing that matters. I don't think they have any cards that when you remove it from soul. That it does something, right? The verses. Never mind. Big hit. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Appreciate the follow. Mag Gaming. Who is that? Is that Spencer? What up, Spencer? How's it going? Business is booming, right? You got any Lorcana for cost? I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> oh. Great. For anybody who doesn't know, this is my sponsor. He's a great guy. Go to magnoliagaming.com for all your flesh and blood needs. He'll hook you up or message him. Tell him I sent you. Oh my god. My man. Look at all that. That's so cool. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. All these subs. Five gifted subs. Well, that's the first time anybody's gifted a sub. Godspeed. I'm glad you uh you got to see the end of the stream. Unfortunately, it's uh gonna be over after this one, but hopefully we we'll see you on the next one. This Bolton is uh looking like he's he's getting roughed, roughed up, dodged like that dominated crippling. Okay, well, you know, look at all these D-Reacts. Gonna get them. Bang. I think this is probably it. Well, I mean, they're not dead, but like, they're basically dead. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll block that one. It's a freebie. Yeah, I haven't had a Bravo game like this in a while where I just go, <laughs> all right, let's recap. Tear Asunder, Command and Conquer Pummel, Crippling Crush, Dominated, Starstruck Dominated, Command and Conquer Pummel, Rousing Ancients into Choke Slam, Spinal Crush Dominated, and the Spinal Crush Dominated. Like, that's, that's, uh, it's hard to beat. Hard to beat. Nice. Hit him for five. No go again for you.
And um, yeah, whatever they do, I'm probably going to crown a providence, try to dominate. No, we won't do that. We'll just take it. Just dominate this choke slam. Be boring. I was wanting to like hit him with the starstruck, but yeah, guaranteed lethal. Maybe they don't have a soul shield. That's the only way they don't die here. That's it. Well, I guess uh, they could have done a sink below, but yeah, you know what I mean. All right, people. Well, go back to the main screen. Look at our results. I had a good time. I hope everybody else had a good time hanging out. Had some good games. Got beat by the goaded Icelander in the chat. Very good. Um... I didn't play five. Maybe we got started and because I left, they claimed the loss. I think that's how that works, but either way. Fortunately, we couldn't finish that Lexi match. That would have been a really good one. I think Took Slam still needed the best slot after Lexi and Briar LL. That is the question, isn't it? I um I don't know how we're going to move about. I know we're getting some new, like super cool cards, like this uh Civic Steps. Definitely gonna be playing that. There's another one. There's like this towering card, right? I don't know if they added it. Lay down the line. Yeah, that's it. So there could just be like a new archetype, right? This three for seven. Like if there's some relevant majestic on hit with tower, we might start playing something in that slot. So... Oh, I can edit results and show me how to edit results. Tell me, tell me. Let's make it happen. Um, all results, add results. Upper left, add result. Okay. When played, posing, turn cycles here at first so this is adding but it's not removing right it's not a big deal i'm not like super concerned about the uh the win rate or anything like that i appreciate the appreciate the help oh you watch taylor do it okay yeah i'll ask taylor yeah this is weird maybe i'm not here yeah, we'll get it fixed. I'll take some of these off. Like this Phi. Makes no sense. Yeah. The Reinar makes no sense. But anyway, uh, let's go back here. We were talking about the tower card. I I'm kind of excited about this. I've been looking forward to like an embolden style deck for a long time. And of course, with something like Lay Down the Law, we would have to do something with, you know, like the tower, whatever it's called, Towering Titan. But if there's one that, let's say, is a um, eight attack or higher, right? Then it could be good. Bolden could be the move. I see. Yeah. I'll mess around with it later. Appreciate the help. But, yeah, I mean, something along those lines, but out of the cards that we have available, I'm very inclined to play something like Debilitate or something like Crush Confidence could be very good. Um, even Cartilage Crush. Like, I mean, basically a free Frostbite in a way. It's almost like a hamstring shot, but with a little more text to make it happen. I've always liked Cartilage Crush. And I, I have pink ones, so I like kind of want to just play it. But uh, Disable. Disable's not bad either. That might be the move. But I really like having a four cost because being able to block with your Starstruck and another card and then getting the Surge when you didn't have a Surge to play something like a Debilitate or a Chokeslam or something along those lines 
is so good. It's so good. And uh, Debilitate always has text against pretty much everybody, unless you're playing literally Kano. And, I mean, if you're playing Kano, you're already kind of like at a loss there, so it's not that big of a deal. Would I run Thump if I'm on Embolden? I would very much likely play Thump, especially the blue ones. Those are kind of free to play, right? Like if we're not concerned about Runeblade or the Rangers as much anymore, we don't have to worry about the Warmongers, right? So we can cut those, play like blue pumps, or not pumps, thumps. Could be cool. Okay, go to your results tab of the deck button at the top right here. Looks like a bullet list. Okay, bullet list. Got it. Oh, next to dogs. Oh, this? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was looking at these dots. Other dots. Okay, so this can be deleted. Exclude. That's cool. That's cool. Appreciate that. Um, the other ones are fine, I think, because I think people are starting to play, but I, I'm pretty sure that five was me, so that's good to get rid of. But yeah, I just want Rampart back. I want to be able to play Rampart. I think it'd be cool to, um, also have like an Earthlord bounty deck, not just automatically play tech plating but that would be with a new guardian anyway so lots of things to look forward to i appreciate everybody hanging out but that's gonna be it so uh i will see you next time we'll try for next week and you can go to my youtube watch these split up and i'll uh keep improving on the quality i hope everybody enjoys all right see ya